Welcome to our this year's edition of Counter Talk. Uh, compared to last year, we changed our location and instead of chatting at a bar on a crowded trade show booth, we went down to this beautiful German wine cellar. Today I'm meeting Kai Witter of company Dimension and we will chat about the latest trends in additive manufacturing. So first of all, welcome and cheers Kai. Thank you very much Guido. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. Mmm, that is good. German wine, German wine cellar, a German trade show form next, which is completely different this year in comparison to all the other years. It is, or it has become a truly international exhibition. Um, do you think this will continue to uh, expand into the international markets, uh, even though we have a special year uh, due to Corona? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think that internationalization uh, will take place despite of Corona. Uh, it will maybe uh, impact and change the way we collaborate, we communicate, we meet each other. Um, sometimes even digitization helps to get together easier, quicker, less formal. So I think there is no, there will not be any impact of this trend. Mm -hmm. um, the form next um, has um, um, changed into, um, I would call it a hybrid event in the meantime. The community was, re was really asking to continue this show. It was not cancelled like many other trade shows. It has converted into a, 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 a hybrid event. How do you like this idea of combining um, physical presence of, for example, speakers or exhibitors and the participation of the audience uh, uh, on a virtual base? Well, I think it's a great opportunity. Um, it, I think in general this enlarges uh, the group of people who can participate. So especially as a global show, uh, whatever the continent is, whatever your different other commitments are at the same point of time, uh, you, can, you, you can jump in, uh, participate, contribute to the show, uh, as a speaker or as a visitor. Um, if possible, for sure, you can come and join uh, the Forum Next, I hope, in the future again. So a hybrid event is just allows the whole Forum Next to become even more important, more flexible. Mm -hmm. Let's now talk about the additive manufacturing uh, community, the, um, the change of technologies. Uh, as we have mentioned already last year, uh, this, this community has grown up. It is not anymore a, um, a, a startup community. It is really a, um, an industrial community. Um, let's, well, what are the, the actual trends that we are living in in this, in this community? Yeah, very good question, Guido. I think yeah, you're right. The industry has grown up, the community is growing up. Um, actual trends are obviously um, very much um, um, resulting from COVID as well. So the additive industry is not living on another planet than all the other industries. So what are the, what are the results from this? So maybe a real advantage of additive, and this became very obvious during COVID, is that with additive, there is an opportunity for all customers and all users, enterprises, small and medium companies, to strengthen and stabilize their supply chain. Really decentralize manufacturing supply chains, not depending on one or two countries, um, but being flexible and able to set up a stable, decentralized manufacturing supply chain. So what does it mean? Because of this pressure with COVID, uh, companies and decision makers have been forced to think about what do I need to manufacture my end use parts with additive manufacturing. And as the term additive manufacturing says, it's not about installing a printer. It is about setting up a complete additive manufacturing process chain in order to be able to make use of all the advantages of additive, starting from design, using 3D printers to produce parts or geometries. And for example, this is where dimension comes into place, using our finishing workflows to really produce an end use part in a manufacturing level of quality that customers expect. Last but not least, when people think about this, I think in the past months, the topic of sustainability became more and more obvious. Mm -hmm. It's a key topic, not for additive manufacturing only, but it's an opportunity for our community and our industry 
to speak about this and make very transparent and very obvious that this is maybe the most underestimated advantage of additive manufacturing technologies. Even though we started to talk about um, th these trends um, um, already last year and the year before a little bit, but last year um, heavily uh, because sustainability um, is one of the major topics in, for example, the plastics industry. Uh, and so it is for additive manufacturing for sure. Uh, how did it develop during the last month? I think, you know, when you have uh, such a strong impact on industry and society as with COVID, many things that you are not thinking about in your daily life anymore are questioned again. Um, so sustainability is a broad term. It implies the further development, the wealth development of our society. And I think that everybody in the industry and every decision maker in business and industries is aware that we cannot move on like we did in the past 20 years. Sometimes a shock like COVID helps mm -hmm. to stop, take a break and rethink everything you do. Uh, and this is, I guess, what happened. Um, and more and more the discussions are, let's say, developing from a pure moral discussion or ethical discussion to business value. So what does it mean in terms of cost savings, added value, if I have a sustainable business, a sustainable uh, manufacturing supply chain? And this, from my point of view, is what really what is very different today from maybe just only, let's say uh, it was February, March, maybe nine months ago. So that's a big change. Mm -hmm. You are also part of the uh, Exhibitors Council, so right. you have been participating in the whole process of decision taking. Uh, how will Form Next 2020 look like, independent from COVID-19? Um, what were the first approaches after the last Form Next in 2019? Where did you, uh, where did you plan to head to um, in terms of technology trends? What did you discuss about in the group of exhibitors in the council to be the next hot topic in the market? Very good point. Uh, so unfortunately it's one of the points I said already, so not a new one. It is sustainability. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a, um, it's a, a, a main um, goal uh, and this what the role that Formex should play is to make transparent potentials and opportunities. So it's sustainability. Obviously, I already talked about this. Another topic is integrating the complete additive manufacturing process chain. Mm -hmm. So if companies, and this is what companies are thinking about, this is what companies are testing, validating, if they want to produce final parts with additive manufacturing process chains, it's not good enough to have five to seven different technologies and put them one after the other um, and hope that it works at the end. So the next very, very big step is integrating different process chains. Um, make sure that the additive manufacturing process chain is part of your industrial manufacturing site. One option, it's one option to manufacture parts and it should communicate with your management tools, with your ERP tools, with your MES tools. And this is exactly what we see in this year's Formnex. So it's Formnex Connect, right? It's digital and it's all about digitization of the whole additive manufacturing process chain. And the hardware is moving out of the lab, uh, labs, laboratories, into the shop floor, right? This is exactly what this means. So it's a hand and egg question, right? Mm -hmm. So what do we need first? Do we need to move the technology into, onto the shop floor or do we need integrated manufacturing supply chain? So I think it's a letter. So if you speak with decision makers who are responsible for manufacturing, they are only willing to accept a new technology into their uh, uh, manufacturing site on the shop floor if it at least can communicate and is integratable in their management tool. And reliable. And reliable, sure. reproducible, all this. Uh, I think uh, everybody knows it's possible, but in order to make it happen on big scale, it needs to be integrated and automated. One last question. Yes. Um, can I, can I have a, a small uh, You should. You should. You should. This it's is a good beautiful wine. wine. It should get warm. Thank Thanks get for having warm. me here. Yeah. <laughs> Pleasure. Hmm. I'm, I'm curious, um, what are 
instead of all the, the drawbacks that COVID-19 brought to the, to the community, to the industry, do you also see an advantage? Do you see something where you say, well, without this pandemic, we wouldn't have ever moved into this or that direction? Is there an advantage that you see that you can use for the coming years? Frankly, I don't think it's different, it's just quicker. Hmm. So COVID just, as I said earlier, put so much pressure on decision makers, on companies and, and uh, industries that maybe, you know, you play around a lot with uh, PowerPoints and series and what could be. And, but as long as business is running, people are hesitant to take decisions and drive big change because they mainly see the risk more than the opportunity. So I think that COVID mainly uh, brought up a lot of speed and makes things obvious. No technology is so flexible as additive. Mm -hmm. You can change, uh, can change um, your manufacturing, the products that you manufacture within hours. Mm -hmm. We know that automotive companies were able to produce face shields within hours. No other technology is able to do it. As I said earlier, the supply chains, the fragile supply chains, maybe just one line to, to Asia, that's dangerous. So now it's obvious, unfortunately, we as human beings need some pain to change. <laughs> That's a good last sentence. Guy, thank you very much for coming uh, and uh, for pleasure. enjoying together with me um, the new things about Form Next this year, 2020. Thank Thanks. you very much, Guido. Thank you. All the best. <laughs> Thanks for watching and see you in the next edition of Counter Talk. See you then. Bye.